Thanks for joining us today on One on One. I'm Sarah Burke, and with us today we have members of the Humane Society. And I am so excited because if you're an animal lover just like me, this show is for you. And with us today we have... Hi, good day. I'm Andrea Martin. I'm president of the board of directors of the Humane Society. Welcome, Andrea. Hi, I'm Joe Bain, chair of the Humane Care Campus Committee. And welcome, Joe. Hi, my name is Rhea Vasconcellos, and I'm in charge of the pet transports and also adoption counseling. Well, welcome all. Thank, Thank you for you. coming and taking the time out from your busy schedule to be with us on One on One. Now, I am so excited. I know that the Humane Society has really worked so hard to move into this new building. And I know that you have an opening date coming up and I want us to talk about that so we can create a community awareness to be involved in the Humane Society a little bit more than what they're doing right now. So when is this great event taking place? I'm gonna turn it over to Joe. He's yes. got the big Joe. news. <laughs> After several years of um, pushing forward and a few obstacles, we are open to the public. We're gonna have our grand opening for our supporters on soon, Sunday, June 24th. All right. And we're going to be open for business for the public on Monday, June 25th. So if I want to adopt a dog and adopt a cat, that's where I need to go on that particular day? From June 25th. From June 25th. On. On. Okay, all right. right. But actually, we're going to have one week where we're going to be transitioning the animals over to the new campus and getting the staff acclimated to their new environment. So for that week, mm -hmm. our actual um, adoption side and you know, we'll still do intake and we'll still respond to emergencies, but the actual um, Humane Society itself will not be open for business for that one week period while we transition over. Now, Maria, the Humane Society does so much, and I know that there's been an active campaign in terms of transporting pets. Yes. I know that I'm an animal lover, and in any which way that I can help, I would. Let's talk about a little bit in terms of this pets with wings. Yes. I get so excited just thinking about that. Oh, it's my favorite project. <laughs> um, we have been very lucky that American Airlines has agreed to tr uh, transport any pets that we have to a shelter in Rhode Island. Okay. Uh, apparently Rhode Island, it's called the Potter's League. Rhode Island has a very strict spay and neuter policy. So unless you're a dog breeder, mm -hmm. you have to have your dogs and cats spayed and neutered. Okay. So this creates a shortage of puppies, if we can believe that, mm -hmm. uh, and small dogs, actually. So they have a waiting list at the Potter's League in Rhode Island of over 300 people. Wow. So American Airlines has graciously allowed us to transport any dogs that we have mm -hmm. to the Potter's League free of charge, but we require someone to travel with them. This mm -hmm. has to be someone who has already has a reservation, not okay. someone that thinks that we were able to pay for them. Okay. And what we do, we select a dog, uh, we send the information to the Potter's League to make sure that they're interested in this dog. We make sure all the tests are done. We get their health certificates, their rabies vaccination. We do everything. We meet you at the airport, be it six o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. We deliver the dog to you at the airport. We're there with you while American Airlines who have been fantastic, the girls behind the counter, we take pictures, they go wow. on Facebook, uh, we make sure the dog is checked in, you get checked in, usually they bring you to the front of the line. If it's a larger dog that's going in cargo under a seat, mm -hmm. that means that once it gets through customs, it has to go through t to TSA, the dog is removed from the crate, the crate is inspected, the dog is placed back in the crate, we even have someone to help you do that. Okay, uh, we, you can take a dog under the seat, or in cargo. Mm -hmm. It depends on the size of the dog. Uh, we also, if you have a friend who comes to visit our beautiful island and they fall in love with one of our dogs at the Humane Society, American Airlines will transport the dog free back to your home. Wow, so, so it's, it's a win-win win situation. Program. It's a definitely a win-win. And Andrew, what is your role with the Humane Society? I know that you've just taken on a new leadership role. Uh, yes, I became president uh, last July. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot to learn very quickly, but mm -hmm. it's basically overseeing the entire operation of the Humane Society. Uh, for a number of years, we have not been able to afford an executive director. Okay. Um, so essentially the president acts as the executive director, um, handles finance, administration, personnel, programs, public relations, um, with the committee help too of the other board members. So, okay. but uh, yeah, it's been a real interesting year. It seems like you have a lot uh, to do yes, and a little I bit do. of time. Yes, All right. a lot to do. And Joe, what is your role and what, how did you get yourself involved with the Humane Society? Um, actually, I was invited to join the board several years ago mm -hmm. um, and said yes. And that's basically, I've always loved um, the work of the Humane Society. 
and I've always had, of course, um, my own personal animals and stuff, but this was an opportunity to help a population that has no voice. Correct. So that's actually what got me motivated to join. I'm actually a board member, mm -hmm. so um, I work on programs as needed, but my main goal is actually opening this campus, which we can finally now announce a date. And where is the campus located, just so that our audience can know? <coughs> It's on the Weymouth Rhymer Highway. Okay. And it's actually right across from Postulates on the opposite side of the road. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a big gate that's open with a sign right now. Okay. Um, the signage will improve once we finally get in. And right now, our dream is that the Virgin Islands Department of Public Work will grant us a stoplight on our side of the street. Cool. So that our guests can exit and feel safe. Safe, absolutely. Now, Maria, you are the specialist in terms of for adoption. And I remember taking my daughter to the Humane Society in the state of Florida. And I mm -hmm. felt as if though there was so much that paperwork that I needed to do and so much screening. It's almost like adopting a child. Let's talk a little bit about what is the process. If I am interested in adopting a pet, okay. how do I go about it? Well, we consider our dogs our children anyway. Absolutely. Okay, so when you come in, first of all, you'll be greeted at the front desk. And you'll say, I'm interested in a dog or a cat. And mm -hmm. we try to feel you out to say what type of dog or cat you're interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, then we will escort you usually or let you go up and down the kennel area to take a look at a dog and if you see one that you'd like to see a little bit more of right. we'll go back we'll bring the dog out to you let you walk it around the parking lot and try to interact with it so let's say you've decided you want this dog mm -hmm. then you have to fill out an application a basic application um, if you're renting you, we require you to get a letter from your landlord indicating that they will allow you to have this dog or cat. Wow. Okay. okay. Uh, if you've had a dog before, we usually like to have a vet reference. Mm. Uh, if it's going to be anything like a pit bull, pit bull mix, a rotty, we mm -hmm. usually do a home visit because we want to make sure that the dog is going into a safe environment. We, even though it is not illegal to chain your dogs, we do not condone chaining a dog. I and, have a problem with that too. Right. And that. if we find out that the dog is going to be chained, we will not. Right. We also call the vet to, to find out if you've had a dog in the past, if you've brought the dog in on a regular basis. We sit down and explain to you that there's certain things. It's more than just adopting a dog. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be willing to take on the responsibility to see that it gets to the vet on a timely ma manner, right. that it's given heartworm preventative, that you're on the lookout for tick fever and you're giving it medicine to help counteract that wow. to make sure that you know how you're supposed to care for this dog. The dog cannot be kept on a chain 24-7. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if you have little kids in the family and let's say we try to know the personalities of our dogs. So if you have a three or four year old and you want to adopt a Yorkie, if we have a Yorkie, mm -hmm. generally we don't recommend it because Yorkies are fragile dogs Very and small. two year olds will hug them to death, yes, literally. Yes, yes. Uh, if it's a larger dog and you have small children, we try to understand what the family life is going to be like because we don't want to put the family at risk or the dog at risk. So we have to make sure that the match is equal. That right. Is a great partnership. You know? And then within one or two days, we will um, call you back and tell you whether or not your adoption is approved. All right. So it's not such an easy process. Let me come in, let me just look around and let me go walk off with a new dog and or cat. And there's also another thing that I wasn't aware of for a long time is that once you sign this agreement, let's say it doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. You cannot just give your dog to your next door neighbor. Oh, you okay. have to call us and say it's not working out and we'll ask why. Well, we found a good home for him. Have the person come in and we'll transfer the ownership of the dog to that person. Okay. Uh, this, uh, our adoption fee is $105, okay. which includes the spaying or the neutering, all of its shots up to date at the time you adopt. Mm -hmm. It is microchipped and it, it usually has a deworming. All right. Mm -hmm. So. We want to encourage people to go on ahead and adopt animals as well. Yes. Um, when we get back, we're going to talk a little bit more with members of the Humane Society and ask you to be part of this opening, grand opening, and make a difference in our community. So hurry up. If you're a dog animal, don't change that channel. If you are a cat animal, don't change it either. Just stay tuned. There's some that will tell you there is no real evidence of gang problems in the U.S. Virgin Islands. There are some that want you to think that the violence we read about each day is isolated to a handful of teenagers and younger adults interested only in shooting and killing each other. To those people, we would like to say thank you. You're the reason we formed an organization called the Virgin Islands Anti-Gang Committee, focused on gang prevention and a safer community through targeted outreach, training, and education. 
That's what we came up with the show. Interesting people, we wanted to be one-on-one, -on -one, conversation, not your traditional talk show. We really want to provide you with the real facts, the real talk, one-on-one. -on -one. We are back with members of the Humane Society, and I was so excited because I myself am an animal lover. I prefer dogs over cats, even though I've had cats as well. And Andrea, I wanted to touch bases with you in terms of what are some of the new initiatives that the Humane Society is putting forth in our community? If you can just enlighten us so that we have a greater sense of community awareness. Oh, of course. I'd mm -hmm. love to talk about that. Um, one of the biggest things for us, of course, is constant fundraising. Right. Um, we have a contract with the government of the Virgin Islands that provides a base amount of income for us, but we are constantly fundraising to, to increase that to make sure that we cover all of our expenses. Okay. So our next fundraising initiative is Play for Paws Golf Tournament, which is on Father's Day. Isn't that a cute right. name? Play yes. for Paws. Play for Paws. <laughs> And so that's coming up. Uh, we're looking for sponsors and players. And if anyone knows Chris Mackin, who's the manager of Ma uh, Mahogany Run Golf Course, mm -hmm. she's, she's one of our board members, and she's one of the people in charge of that particular event. So anybody can contact Chris okay. and sign up to play, sign up to be a sponsor, uh, sign up to participate. We also have a raffle going on with that as well. So that's coming up. Mm -hmm. um, after that, you know, we're probably planning a few small fundraisers, but right now our biggest source of additional funding is coming from our boutique. Mm -hmm. It's called the No Flea Boutique mm -hmm. uh, versus mm -hmm. the old flea market that we had <laughs> at the other shelter. But the No Flea Boutique is doing extremely well. It's been open since October. It is um, available now at the new campus. That's the one building that's open and ready. Um, the boutique is open from 11 to 3 on Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. And we're doing extremely well with both donated items and sales there. Mm -hmm. We have a great retail manager team led by Leslie Maxwell, who's a volunteer. They're all volunteers in there, and they're doing extremely well for us. So that's another new initiative that we're still pushing. I know for a fact that I used to go to the flea market all the time and pick up little knickknacks, but I've seen that your this new thing has just expanded beyond the wildest dreams. It's like just people it, keep bringing stuff in, and the, the sales are just moving rapidly. It is. It's, mm -hmm. it's pretty amazing. Um, we have furniture, housewares, electronics, clothing, books, DVDs, all kinds of things, the whole jewelry section. So I think um, you know, if people want to come out there on a nice Saturday or Sunday, they're looking for something fun to do, it's actually going to be the nicest boutique on St. Thomas, believe me. There you and go. <laughs> people will be in, they're walking in, they even take the dollar bus and they walk up the road and walk out yes, with big bags. Big bags. <laughs> so, uh, it's quite, it's quite great. Of course, then when the campus is open in June, you know, it'll be much more exciting up there. We have lots of things going on. But, you know, we should ask Joe to describe the different buildings. Joe, let's talk about that. Let's talk the about campus. the different buildings, part, this new campus that you have. Part of the, the goal of this whole thing was to integrate children. Right. To make it a safe zone, not only for the animals, but for the children of the community. So we have a building, the Corinne Lockhart Education Building, which is dedicated to programs that we're going to have in the future, um, summer programs, after school program, Wonderful. maybe some humane ambassador, which we have some now. We actually mm -hmm. have kids that will have birthday parties and they, it'll be to benefit the animals instead of gifts. They want their gifts to go towards the animals. And that's awesome. So that whole building is used for education of the youth in the community. And we also have high school students that work with us on mm -hmm. different projects. Mm -hmm. We have one building that's called the Cat Cabana um, and that is where the cats will be housed in both indoor and outdoor environments. They'll be able okay. to be outdoors during the daytime. We have, of course, our administration kennel and vet tech suite, which encompasses the adoption area, as well as drop-offs and, you know, where you're greeted when you come in. Um, and then the vet tech holding area. All animals that come to the Humane Society don't automatically get placed for adoption. Mm -hmm. They have to be evaluated by our staff. Mm -hmm. They have to, you know, we test for aggression, um, as Rhea was mentioning. Um, some of, the, you know, if they have heartworm, if they have some other issue that needs to be addressed, and then they're held for X number of days, and then brought up into the actual adoption area. Okay. The really great thing about the campus is that it's 4.7 acres. Wow. So you can actually spend time in an outdoor play area with a potential animal that you want to adopt, and, mm -hmm. you know, really see that fit and see how that works out. You can actually, as a volunteer, take the animals on a walk, on a trail. 
that's either flat or a little bit more challenging on the hillside. And the fact that it's taken a little while to complete means that our cisterns are full and their trees are, everything is grown up and when it opens it'll look like, wow. So, you know, it, you know it, it's been a wait, but I think it's going to be so exciting come June 24th and 25th that um, people are really going to see what it was all about and it will be a tremendous will make a tremendous tremendous impact on the community all right and when we get back we'll have more in terms of some of the activities that are going on in the humane society how you can help really help this establishment grow so stay tuned i'm here for a cancer free world because they've helped me i'm now giving back hi i'm lorraine bond with the american cancer society and i'd like to invite you to the relay for life june 23rd and 24th right here on st thomas and i'd like to thank all the sponsors for this relay we couldn't have done it without you it's not too late please join us as a sponsor this year by calling 775-5373 We're back, animal lovers, with members of the Humane Society. Rhea, I want to talk about it. There's an issue that troubles me all the time when mm -hmm. I see these animals that are not neutered in spray. I know that in the state of Rhode Island, as you may mention earlier, there are strict laws in terms of neutering, right. but we don't have any here in the VI, and it has a direct impact on our community. What can we do to turn to the Humane Society for help? Okay. as it relates to these animals that are not neutered and or sprayed? We have a low-income spay-neuter program. Mm -hmm. So if your income is below a certain amount and there's other criteria, you can come in and get a low, uh, excuse me, cost spay-neuter certificate. Okay. It'll, it's $50, mm -hmm. and that will be honored by the vets. I think you have to pay the vets another $15 administrative fee. Okay. And you can get your dog or cat spayed or neutered. Mm -hmm. If you have more than one animal, come and talk to us, because our whole purpose is to try to make sure that we don't have an overabundance of population in dogs and cats. Uh, we try to encourage spay-neutering. Your dog will be healthier. Okay, uh, male dogs don't change their personality. Mm. They calm them down a bit. A female dog, you don't want her having a puppy every nine months, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not good for your dog at all. Mm -hmm. And plus, puppies are cute, but puppies grow into be big dogs. Big dogs. <laughs> and they're not cute anymore. <laughs> and you, they don't take care of them. Mm -hmm. And if anyone disagrees with us, they need to come and spend a day at the Humane Society, a couple of days and see how many puppies that we have that we don't have enough people to adopt. Right. You Which know? brings me to the sad side of this whole story. What about if I'm a dog owner and I no longer can afford? Right now we're facing a major crisis economically and I know that pets suffers too. Mm -hmm. What can we do if we can no longer keep our dogs, if we can't keep our cats, because we can't just afford to keep them? How does the Humane Society help? Well, you can bring the dog into the Humane Society. We usually try to sit, you know, when you're overwhelmed like that, sometimes you can't think of other options. Right. If you come into the Humane Society, and I have sat down with people and said, well, can you try this or have you tried doing this? And see if they can find other options than bringing them into us. And I've had our staff, even, we, we are full almost every week. Okay. When we're full and there's an owner surrendered dog, you know, sometimes we have to make a decision. But if you can hang on to the dog, sometimes we'll say, why don't you give us another week and then come back and we'll have a space and we'll try to see if we can find a home for the dog. Mm -hmm. So we don't want you to just let them out in the street. Bring them in and let us sit down with you and see if we can do something to help you out, you know. And if you're going to bring the dog in, bring all the information you can with the dog. If you can get a copy of their vet information, right. you know, how the dog is, let us know what, you know, type of attitude, it, you know, dis temperament, I'm sorry, that it has, and we can sit down and work with you. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult right now because we're getting a lot of dogs being relinquished because the owners can't afford to take can't care afford. of them anymore. That's sad. That's it's sad. very, very sad. That's sad. But in an upbeat news, I would like to be able to share with the viewing audience, if I want to donate to the Humane Society, if I want to be an active participant in helping out the Humane Society because I just love animals, how do I go about it? Well, we would love for everybody in the community to be a member. And mm -hmm. membership fee is, is only $35 for an individual. And when, once you are a member, you get regular communications from us, newsletters, you get updates on specials, um, all kinds of things going on. But that, more importantly, that $35 goes to help us with 
the low cost spay neuter, help pay our employees, and keep operational. So um, membership is a big, big thing for us. Mm -hmm. Regular donations, we're always happy to accept. Um, our post office box is 8150 St. Thomas VI 00801. Mm -hmm. And we will take checks, anything. Okay. You know, so that's very important to us. And then sponsorships for our events that come up. We have some wonderful corporate sponsors that come up and sponsor Every time we have our Valentine Ball, our Play for Paws golf tournament, anything coming up. So we have wonderful sponsors in the community as well. Um, and then, of course, we can always use donations for our boutique, mm -hmm. furniture, clothing, household goods, as long as they're in good use condition. Um, you know, we don't want to have to throw anything out, but um, sometimes we do get items that really aren't. Um, of the correct quality for our boutique. So um, we have lots of ways we can use that. And then probably most importantly, we just need volunteers. Volunteers. We need yeah. volunteers at the shelter mm -hmm. to help socialize the dogs and cats, to help administratively. We need volunteers with the boutique. Um, as I mentioned, it's open um, four hours for three days a week, and we could use all kinds of volunteers to help with that as well. Mm -hmm. And then once we're in our new facility, we will have lots of opportunities to volunteer with educating children, mm -hmm. um, just working on the grounds, uh, all kinds of ways. So anybody who is an animal lover or who just wants to see the animals happy and well taken care of, you know, this is, this is the place to come because mm -hmm. You know, we have some wonderful success stories. Our transport program is, is one of them. Um, every time we have a Barktoberfest, mm -hmm. all the people come and they bring their dogs that have been adopted <laughs> from our facility. And it's amazing. It's like a, a reunion. Right, you know, right, we see right. all these wonderful animals come back <laughs> to, to see us. So um, that's what we need, more community involvement. But it doesn't have to be money. Time is very important too. Time is man's most precious assets, and I know that if we contribute it to the Humane Society, it's definitely for a good cause. Now, Joe, during the course of our conversation, you made mention that one of the buildings is going to be used for educational purposes. I know that as a, um, a teacher, I've sent some of my students to do some job shadowing at the Humane Society. I think it's important. Uh, a lot of children say, I want to be a vet, but they don't understand what it really entails to be a vet. So I want to thank you openly for allowing me to be able to do that. I think that having them exposed to that kind of field and being able to interact with the animal gives them a keen sense in terms of what does it really entail to work with children. Now, in the educational building, what's going to be able to take place? Are you going to have information, disseminating? Yeah. We have books. We're going okay. to have like a library. Uh -huh. We're also going to have um, after-school projects, you okay. know, programs as well. Okay. Um, but the, the, the big thing about having kids interact with animals mm -hmm. is that they, they learn at an early age that animals hurt as well. Yeah. So kids are less likely to be mean or aggressive mm -hmm. to a kitten or a puppy mm -hmm. by having that interaction. And it goes a long way towards helping them as they grow up right. as well, having that positive interaction. All right. Andrew? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's really important that we emphasize the human-animal bond. Um, it, it's, a, it's a real concept, and anybody who's owned a cat or a dog understands exactly what I'm talking about, that being that person I mean, that animal is a person to you. They're our babies. Yes, exactly. <laughs> they become our babies. And not everyone sees them that way. So we are trying to promote that concept. Right. Um, and with children working with animals at an early age, I, we hope that will happen. Our research has shown that um, a, a, an abusive person will start first with abusing an animal right. before going on to a child, a spouse, or another person. Mm -hmm. So if we can get these children early and teach them to be loving to animals, to treat them correctly, we think we can, we can help a whole generation of people grow up to be much better individuals. Well, one of the most meaningful projects that I have been involved in was one where a group of students took their own personal animals over to the Lucin Mellon home because they, the residents there can't have pets, right. but they've always been, for, you know, they've had previous attachments to pets, and when you have to get rid of your pet because you can't have them where you're at, it's really important to still have those bonds, and it was just amazing for me to see the elderly people just caressing and playing with the animals and stuff, and the children being able to understand the importance and the relevance of making sure that the animals are part of 
this project. So right. I want to thank you so much for coming out. And again, we want to encourage our viewing audience to please join us in this grand opening of the Humane Society, which is going to be taking place, Joe, again, give us um, the dates. We, um, we're going to be open for business on June 25th. June 25th. And we're going to have a thank you for everyone that's helped us get to where we're at on June 24th. And thank you openly for all that you do for all the animals and all the people here in the Virgin Islands. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. And You're again, welcome. please welcome. come out, support the Humane Society, make your donations. We want your money to really have an impact on our community. Yes, it is a time of financial hardship, but giving is caring, and we care for our animals, and we thank you so much for coming out. Thanks, sir. Thank you. All right. United for Solutions, helping to produce television programming that informs and inspires the community to take action on social issues.